Turing 6502, Logic Operations Part 2. I'm Dr. Matt Regan. We're managing to work our way through the playlist, and this will be the last video on logic operations. We'll move on to arithmetic operations next. This is the actual PCB version of the Turing 6502, and I want to go over what the different lines of numbers mean. The top line is the current rule number, which is also the state. It represents the value on this bus. This is the notepad location. It's the address going into the 6502 notepad. Rather than numbers, I've tried to display these as characters on the seven segment displays. The middle right number is the value on the symbol bus in hexadecimal. The symbol bus is also really the data bus, and it's this long bus down the bottom of the design. And finally, the lower number is the hexadecimal output from the memory address registers, highlighted here. Now I want to talk about the shift instructions on the 6502. For some reason, they're called arithmetic shift left and logical shift right. Arithmetic shift left just means that each bit is shifted one position to the left. Bit 7 goes into carry, bit 6 goes into 7, 5 goes into 6, and so forth. All the way down to bit 0, which goes into bit 1, but now we need to fill bit 0, and with ASL, we put a 0 into bit 0. Logic shift right is basically the opposite. We move bit 0 into carry, bit 1 into bit 0, bit 2 into bit 1, and we do this all the way up to bit 7, which goes into bit 6. Then we backfill bit 7 with a 0. In the 6502, these operations can either be done on the accumulator, or done on a value stored in memory. Here, I'm going to treat them as four different instructions. ASL on A reg, ASL on a memory location, LSR on A reg, and LSR on a memory location. For those involving the memory location, what I'm actually going to do is read the value into the B register, operate on it, then write it back to the memory. Rotates are very similar, with the exception that the backfill comes from the carry itself. And obviously the carry going in can be different than the carry coming out. Again, instead of counting this as two instructions, I actually implement it as four different instructions. So why do we have an arithmetic shift left, but a logic shift right? To be completely honest, I didn't actually know until I started making this video. It appears to be about how negative numbers are treated in two's complement. An arithmetic shift will preserve the sign, whereas a logical shift may or may not. For positive numbers, a shift left is the same as multiplying by 2, and a shift right is the same as dividing by 2. But let's look at what happens when we try and shift the value minus 8. If we shift left, it's still a negative number, so minus 8 times 2 becomes minus 16, which is correct, which is why the shift left is called an arithmetic shift left. But in the 6502, if we shift right, we lose the top bit. This becomes 0, so minus 8 divided by 2 becomes 124, which is wrong from an arithmetic perspective. That's why this is called a logical shift right rather than an arithmetic shift right. That's my understanding. If anyone has further details, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Now let's look at three ASL instructions ASL 0 page, ASL A, and ASL absolute. We put them in our decode switch statement. Note that the upper and the lower ones actually call an addressing mode, while the middle one directly calls an instruction. We're allowed to mix them up like this if we want. It does mean, though, that we need a second pass decode for the zero page and for the absolute addressing form of the instruction. In ASLA, we move bit 7 of the A register into the carry flag. We then shift the value of a one bit to the left. And finally, we update the value of the negative and zero flags. For all other forms of the ASL instruction, we read from main memory and store it in the B register. We copy the value in bit 7 of the B register and store it in the carry flag. Next, we shift B register to the left and store the result back into main memory. Then, as before, we update the negative and zero flags. Hopefully this is all getting very familiar now, but we add these arcs to rule 28. 
For ASLA, we can effectively implement it with one rule, rule 310. We read the value in A, then write back the same value shifted left by one position. When we're done, we call the appropriate machine to update the flags. Because we deal with every value of A, and we have a pre-computed result, this is really just a big lookup table. For all other forms of the ASL instruction, we go through second pass decode, and from here we initiate the memory read into BREG. This time, we manipulate the BREGister and write the value back into main memory. Because we haven't touched any of the PC or the EA registers, the same address should be in the memory address registers. Finally, we update the negative, zero, and carry flags. Let's put it all together for the ASLA instruction. As we step through it, it's reasonable to think we might go through rules 28, 310, and 78. 28, 310, 78. That looks good. Let's look at rotate. Now this has to be the most classic rotate instruction ever. Rotate the pod, please, Al. Rotate the pod, please, Al. The reason I like this particular scene is it's the first time that Hal's deliberately trying to deceive them. I don't think he can hear us. Rotate the pod, please, Hal. If Hal can read their lips, shouldn't he rotated the pod when they commanded him to? Food for thought. Anyway, back to the 6502. You might be thinking to yourself, why do we need rotate commands when we have shifts? Imagine we have this declaration for the variable length and ints are 32 bits on our compiler. If it's a global variable, it might be stored as four consecutive bytes in zero page memory. And let's assume it's stored in little endian form, meaning the least significant bytes stored at the lower address. Let's say somewhere in the code, we decide that we want to shift length left by one bit position. We start off by clearing carry, loading zero into index X, performing the roll instruction using the zero page address index by X. We increment X, compare it against four, and branch if it's not equal to four. Or we could just unroll the loop and make life a bit easier for ourselves. We clear carry, then we shift left the bits at location eight. The most significant bit is transferred into carry. Next, we do the roll at location 9. Carry goes into the least significant bit. And after the rotate, the most significant bit goes into carry. We continue this for locations A and B. Then when we're done, the integer variable length has been shifted left by one position. Hopefully you can see that rotates are really useful for larger data types, and in particular floating point numbers where we need to align the mantis to do an add or a subtract. We looked at shift left previously, so now we'll look at rotate right. Specifically, rotate right zero page, rotate right A, and rotate right absolute. We add them to our decode switch statement. Second pass decode for zero page and absolute. In the rotate right instruction, we first store carry. We move bit zero of the A register into carry. We rotate A one position to the right. Then we load the previous carry into bit seven. As usual, negative and zero need to be updated. The generic form of this routine is basically the same, except we first load into the B register, operate on the B register, and then write the value back to the same memory location. After all that, we update negative and zero again. I'll scoot through this quickly, but we add the arcs to instruction decode and second pass decode. Rotates are slightly more complex than shifts because we need to remember the carry up front. Rule 316 represents carry clear, and rule 317 represents carry set. In each of these rules, we have an arc for every possible value of A, and each arc writes back the value of A shifted right one with carry. We don't have a hardware unit that does the shift. It's all done with the rule book, which is acting as a lookup table. To perform the roll write from memory, we need to do a read, compute carry, and then a write. The reason we can use the B register is because at the start of each instruction, we just assume that the B register contains junk and that we can override it. There's no assumption of continuity between instructions for the value of B. 
For Rotate Ride Zero page, we should go through rules 28, 329, 331, 332, 29, 323, 324, and back to 76. Now let's compare this against what the machine actually does. This is a random fragment of code taken from Pac-Man for the Rotate Ride instruction. And we can see it works properly. I won't go over them in this video, but there are also state machines for logic shift right and rotate left. That's it for this video. Next video I'll start on arithmetic operations, but for now, like, share and subscribe.